everybody. My name is Mike Guillory. You may know me from SneakerHistory.com or the Sneaker History Podcast. Now, if you haven't heard us before, go ahead and check out the link below. Give us a listen and let us know what you think. Now, today I'm here doing something a bit different. I'm actually doing my first ever YouTube sneaker review. I jumped into this space because I got inspired by a lot of the guys out there putting out some great information, great unboxings, great wear tests, great reviews, and I want to contribute my own to the sneaker space. So, with my channel, you're going to see them. Not necessarily on boxings, but you'll see reviews of hype items, thrift store items, big box deals, GRs, whatever it may be. Just want to give you guys reviews of all the items I'm able to get my hands on. With that being said, let's jump right on into our first shoe. Now, the shoe we're going to talk about today is this has been met with a lot of criticism. I think it got kind of overshadowed by a lot of the sneakers that released this holiday season as well. But it also didn't help that the sneak peek images just didn't do any justice. But without further ado, first sneaker we'll be looking at is going to be. The Jordan 4 and the What the Colorway. Now, this sneaker was one of the sneakers that, again, we saw the sneak peeks and man, the, the photos did not look good. Those photos you always get in those sneak peeks are always just bad lighting, bad contrast, and whatever it may be that makes the sneaker just look horrible. Now, this is gonna be a prime example of getting a sneaker in the hand to change your mind. Because after seeing the photos, I wrote the sneaker off completely, but once I got it in hand, blew my mind because quality, color blocking, the shape, is they're actually fantastic. It's very weird that people let these sit because you go around to any store right now, whether it be a boutique or one of the big box, one of the big guys, you're still sitting. And I think this is one of those sneakers that if you have a little extra little change that you want to buy something, go ahead and pick these up. I think you you will not, you won't regret it. Now, I'm gonna jump on back and kind of what we're looking at and with the what the theme. That's nothing new. With Nike, they've done so with the what the dunk, where you take them out of colorways, throw them on two different shoes and boom, that's your what the pair. Now, Nike's also throwing in their signature basketball line with LeBron's, the KD's, the Kobe's, all have seen the what the colorway. Some done better than others, just depending on the model and depending on how the colors look. Now, Nike's signature line basketball shoes aren't doing as hot as they were at the time. So Jordan's kind of stepped in and started doing their own versions of the what the. The first jump into this ring with the what the colorway was with the Jordan 1, of course. Why not? It's the darling model of the Jordan line right now and it can almost do no wrong. So you had the top three Jordans, they took the Royals, they took the band colorway, took the Chicago colorway, kind of meshed them together in a nice color blocking to make a top three or a what the. They also tried it with a gold package, which not really a what the, but it just gave you two mismatching shoes with the black, white, and gold colorway. The next jump into that color would be the Homage to Home, which was more of two shoes being divided in half and kind of melted together, basically. Not one of my favorites, but nonetheless, the Jordan won and it sold out instantly. Now, as we fast forward the time to now, we have the Jordan 4. Another beloved silhouette. Typically, when a Jordan 4 comes out in a decent colorway, they'll, they'll fly off shelves pretty quickly. I mean, they won't sell out as fast as the Jordan 1, of course, but they'll, they'll be off shelves in time. But not this one. This one's actually, again, still sitting around. I uh, didn't get the love that it should have got, but in those early photos really turned people off. And it could have gotten kind of, you know, just did a shuffle when it comes to the Jordan 11 playoffs that came out and then a few Yeezys that also released as well. With this shoe, as I'm just looking at it right now, I mean, this is a very put, well put together shoe. Maybe the Watha title was a bit over the top four because this reminds me more of the top three as opposed to a Watha. I mean, you have your military blue, fire red, more fire red, white cement. You're also gonna have hits on the other shoe here of the black cement as well. You see it here, just midsole, tongue tag. I think it's a great idea, but a lot of people were upset that, you know, one of the shoes didn't come in a black new buck, which makes sense to a degree, but I feel like Jordan Brand and Nike were going for a more wearable option. They were probably hoping that these would fly off shelves more since they were more in that top three round as opposed to the what the. I think a lot of that could have been deterred if they sort of called it a top four, since they took four of the iconic OG Jordan 4 colorways and put them into one shoe. That would have been a way better way to advertise as opposed to the what the. Because people have a very different mindset when they hear that, that color title. Now, with the shoe, the three things, you may have heard me mention already, three things that I really liked about it were leather quality, color blocking, and shape. Now we jump right on into leather quality, very soft. Again, those sneak peek images made it look like they were plastic. These are some of the best leather I've seen in recent history from the Jordan Retro. 
Now, we want to go ahead and leave shattered backboards out of it because that seems like a one-off and I feel like we're never gonna get that again, but if you can see up close here, this level increases very nicely. Whenever you push it down, it's not hard, it has some give to it. That's something all Jordan collectors, sneaker collectors are looking for, a quality shoe. Now, we did pay a premium for the nicer leather, which is $200 as opposed to the 190 normal retro tag, but I'm okay with that. Reason being is that, Rumor is that Jordan Brand is going to go ahead and increase the price to $200 for retros in 2020 regardless. So if this is just a preview of us getting better quality for an extra $10, that's great. I just hope they don't revert back to give us plastic quality for $200. We're paying $220, $230, $240 for a natural leather. Jumping into the color blocking, this shoe, as I showed you before, mixes those four OG colorways. And they do it in a way that makes your shoe really wearable. A lot of what the colorways are very extravagant and very loud that you have to almost pick an outfit for it because there's just so much going on. But these, you get a nice white base leather and you have your different colors. And you know, regardless if you're mismatched or not, they came out very well. Very easy to wear with anything. And it's just a very clean shoe. There's not having to wear, oh wait, I got too much blue, I gotta mix this red, black, gray cement color. None of that. You can wear this with anything just like you're wearing a pair of white cements. Cool. Very easy to do. The shape, which is a very important part, especially for a lot of people who pay attention to the OGs of these shoes. Now, if you look, as you go down the front of the shoe here, you see it's a very nice slope and it's actually a very short toe box compared to what we've seen in you know past Jordan 4 releases. And that's one of the things I noticed. Now, I've never owned a pair of OG 4s. They came out the same year I was born in 89, so I've never actually had to see them in hand. But just doing research for the website and for the podcast, I've gotten to know some of like, the different shapes and how they've changed over years with just the multiple retros. Now, a great example of that is if I show you this, a Jordan 4 Military Blue from 2012. Now, it is seven years old and has some wear to it, but you can clearly see the difference in the shape. You see a why the toolbox is. It's very square, very boxy, and provide a lot of dead space on top of your foot, which made it feel weird when you put it on. I'm normally size 10. This is a size 10. This is a size 10 as well. But these fit completely differently. This one fit like a glove, nice and snug right on top, not hurting, but not too much space above. While this one had seemed like endless amount of space above my foot, and when I walked immediately, bad creases. Now, creases don't really matter to me that much. I mean, I'm gonna wear them, they're gonna crease, it is what it is, but it's weird for such a deep crease to happen after two, three steps of just putting them on out of the box. And I know that will irritate a lot of Jordan collectors, heck, a lot of shoe collectors in general. What we see here in this What the Colorway is probably the closest, maybe the best shape in a very long time. And that's good because it looks like Jordan Brand is actually listening to what the consumers want. We're getting better shapes and not only this four, but it looks like we're gonna get better shapes in the Jordan 1 coming 2020. And and then also the Jordan 5 that's supposed to be coming out in the fire red colorway it looks to be a better shape from those preview images. Also, as you see, I turn the shoe around, Nike Air on the tab. Everyone wants a Nike Air on the tab. Personally, it can be Jumpman, Nike Air. I don't care as long as the shoe's nice. I'm the only one wear. 200 bucks for a Nike Air tab compared to some of the other shoes we get, 225, 250, depending on the silhouette. I say this is steel. Go ahead, if you're a real big fan of that tab, grab them, 200 bucks. They're not for resale, they're nothing right now. Catch them at retail. Maybe you can catch them below retail soon, but I say don't sleep on this shoe because this is not necessarily going to go up in value, I don't think, but I feel like it's one of those colorways you'll look back and like, man, I wish I would have got this like three, four, five years down the road. Just a pretty cool conversation piece. You look into your closet, talk about your collection, you're like, oh yeah, I forgot to came out with this what the four. I don't know, it's really cool to have. I've been wearing them pretty much ever since I received them. I actually got them for a gift. Actually, both me and my wife got them as a gift for Christmas from my younger brother. So shout out to my brother for getting these to us. Yeah, they've been in heavy rotation since I received them and they're going to continue to be in rotation and maybe they sit around long enough, go on sale and grab a second pair just to, just to keep on ice if these uh, get too beat. But let me know what you guys think of the sneaker in the comments. Did you cop? Did you pass? Are you going to cop whenever the price goes down? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Also, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at madwatcher789. And then follow me on sneakerhistory.com and listen to the Sneaker History Podcast. Until next review, see ya!